All right, so continuing on, um, backing material. Uh, we just talked about the matching layer. Now we're going to talk about the backing material because these are the two most important things. The matching layer and gel provide us with the transmission of the ultrasound beam. What does the backing material do? Uh, it is that dampening or that damping material. It prevents the PZT from ringing for a long time. We talked about that less ringing damping effect in chapter 8, correct? Um, when we talked about axial resolution. It lessens that ring time. Ringing is substantially reduced. The impedances of the damping material and the PZT are similar. Therefore, sound energy is absorbed into the backing material, not reflected back. That way, when that PZT rings, we absorb all that extra stuff we don't want, and what we do want is transmitted out. Um, it creates shorter pulses, less ringing, creates short pulses, which improves accuracy or axial resolution. So, it is important that we understand the other ways backing material affects the transducer, okay? There are some consequences, good and bad. All right, the three consequences of using backing material are, and this is all new stuff, so we're going to go over it. So this is going to be like, an, you know, I'm going to try to keep this as simple but as detailed as possible. Three consequences. We have a decreased sensitivity. We have a wide bandwidth and a low quality factor. And we're going to talk about each one of these in depth. So decreased sensitivity. This means that the transducers with dampening material are less able to convert low level sound reflections into meaningful electrical signals during reception. All that saying is we got to take the good with the bad. It's good when we transmit because we want to create short pulses and make that, that short that better ax axial resolution. So during transmit, it's doing good things. But when we receive sound, remember that that crystal is vibrated again, okay? And some of that is absorbed into this damping material. So we lose a little bit, just the weak ones. Not everything, just the weak ones. So, you know, think about what the word says, sensitivity. So in other words, during reception, when we get, you know, instead of getting every single bit of piece of information, you know, we lose just a little bit. However, it's enough that we can create our accurate images. Okay? It just decreases the sensitivity of the probe. Uh, you know, sensitivity is sensitivity, whether it's emotions, whether it's hearing, whether it's receiving whether it's whatever okay it's just that dampening that extra dampening material decreases decreases that sensitivity to the point where some of that sound that we receive back is absorbed and we can't convert that into electrical signals to create a picture it's a simple straightforward process bandwidth um, and again, bear with me, this is going to be a little detail and I'm going to try to get you through this. Bandwidth is the range or difference between the highest and lowest frequencies in the pulse. And when you look at this, look at figure 9-2, okay? And when you read this in the book, you know, it'll, it'll get detailed for you. Bandwidth, the range or difference between the highest and lowest frequencies in that pulse. When a guitar string is plucked, the tone is pure because the string vibrates freely for a long time at a single frequency or also called that resonant frequency. This creates a long pulse with a narrow bandwidth. And look at your picture while we're talking about this. Because it is pure and it is in, in, in tune, so to speak. You have that string vibrating for a long time at a single frequency or resonant frequency. That's a long pulse with a narrow bandwidth. 
Remember, single frequency or narrow range. Backing material prohibits those free vibrations, restricting the PZT to a short duration sound. So that short sound then contains many different frequencies above and below the resonant frequency or single that single resonant frequency that original frequency if you will there's there's a frequency in the middle and there's frequencies on each side both higher and lower this creates short pulses with a wide bandwidth remember short pulse wide range it's the exact opposite of each other so if we just let the PZT ring we would have these long pulses with a single frequency or we'd have a long pulse with a narrow bandwidth but because we use damping material we kind of we kind of stunt the growth if you want to look at the picture that way or or push down these these pulses or these I'm sorry these frequencies well and pulses to to and by doing that we create a shorter sound dampening which contains many different frequencies both above and below the resonant frequency so therefore our bandwidth increases uh, remember short pulse wide range and the picture is in the book is very detailed it shows you alright so therapeutic ultrasound and continuous wave ultrasound or continuous wave Doppler do not use backing material they are long pulse narrow bandwidth they're free to do whatever they want okay long pulse that's that guitar string all right with so it's a long vibrating pulse with a narrow or single frequency or narrow bandwidth imaging probes however use backing material so they are short pulse wide bandwidth all right we shorten that pulse with the dampening material creating a wider bandwidth or multiple frequencies within that bandwidth okay figure 92 shows that on page 122 now let's think about this as ultrasound techs you know we talked about higher frequencies can image better shallow and lower frequencies can image better deep we're taking advantage of dampening that that sound creating a wider bandwidth or multiple frequencies both high and low so that we that's more useful to us those multiple frequencies than just one specific individual or narrower bandwidth correct I would rather want a we want that shorter pulse with those frequencies ranging let's say between three or two and six or three and six or whatever it is versus that long pulse which we don't like anyway with say a bandwidth between one and two does everybody understand that that's just that's a pretty straightforward principle all we're doing is using that backing material to create shorter pulses firstly secondly the good that goes along with that that creates a wider bandwidth or multiple frequencies that we can use to see images better both close to the probe and away from the probe so let's talk about a low quality factor what does this mean what is quality factor quality factor is a unitless number that is related to bandwidth it is mathematically defined as the Q factor is equal to the main frequency divided by the bandwidth so if I said the main frequency was 10 and the bandwidth was 2 quality factor would be 5 
if I said the main frequency was 10 and the bandwidth was 5 it would be 2 see how that that number gets lower as I increase that bandwidth okay so by understanding this formula wide bandwidth probes have a low quality factor I just gave you an example of that okay the lower that bandwidth or the narrower that bandwidth those probes have a higher quality factor those are the continuous wave Doppler and therapeutic probes all right when I say therapeutic I'm saying like physical therapy ultrasound probes all right CW Doppler or continuous wave Doppler and therapeutic probes are narrow bandwidth probes that have a high quality factor because there's no dampening material wide bandwidth probes have a low quality factor those are the imaging probes they have that damping material that creates that I just gave the example back here and by understanding that formula you understand why the Q factor is low with higher bandwidth probes and higher with lower bandwidth probes or narrower bandwidth probes so to help you remember quality factor or Q factor is directly related to the pulse length a shorter pulse has a lower quality factor a longer pulse has a higher quality factor that shorter pulse is created by that dampening material where the dampening material is what shortens the pulse so therefore it has a lower quality factor that longer pulse is that guitar string that's free to ring it has a narrower bandwidth so that longer pulse has a higher Q factor those are the continuous wave Doppler and therapeutic probes or the yeah so which one are you are you the one to the left are you the one to the right hopefully you are this guy I do not want you to be her I want you to be him so if you understand the principles and understand everything that from here on that we've talked to or, or talked about from here back to the front of chapter 9 you should be okay I'm going to break this up into the second part because I'm running out of time go back review this is a good stopping point you can understand those certain principles you should be able to answer any question that I give you so take your time with it understand it grasp it know it and you'll be fine don't read any more into it than it is and we'll answer some questions on Monday so stay tuned for part two of chapter nine